Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Good morning, Kelly. <laughs> Good morning, Marsha. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm trying to keep in my head all the things I want to talk about over the last three weeks when uh, I, a lot has happened. Yes, we've been very busy. Mm. Should we jump right into it? Yeah, let's do. Okay. Let's do I have it. to, just before we start we start talking, I just have to say we're having another, uh, Seattle's being affected by forest fires again. So it's very, very smoky here. In fact... I woke up at three this morning. I I had the because I could smell it. The and I could taste it in my throat. Mm-hmm. I had the windows open and um, uh, yeah. I woke up at three, tasting that smoke in my mouth, kind of, and and feeling kind of like I was slightly suffocating. You know, it's mm-hmm. weird. So I've got the windows closed now. But if I sound croaky and weird, that's why. Is like I think I'm having a little bit of a reaction to the, as everybody is that smoke. smoke it's really. Yeah. It's really bad. Um, well, we actually anyway. had rain the last oh. couple of days. Um, I don't know how much impact it had on the fires. Yeah, we while we were camping, we had one of the days was quite rainy, and then the day we the day we drove home was also a rainy day. So, hmm, that was good. That was very yeah. I was very happy to see to see that rain. So hopefully, you guys will get some too. Yeah, we I, there's no rain in the forecast, um, but it it it's uh, it was last weekend. Let's see, yeah, not this past weekend because we we're recording on what day is this today, Kelly? <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Today's Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that, I actually went on um, went over to the Olympic Peninsula with my friend that I met hiking. Um, and there was a really bad, uh, the smoke was really bad when we were headed over, headed over there and I actually got an alert on our phone that they were evacuating near Index, oh, uh, wow. which is Index, Washington, where, you know, mm-hmm. where Ben does all of his climbing and I've gone hiking there. Uh, they were evacuating because there was the Bolt Fire, which was just um, like a mile down the road from Index. So they got, yeah, as I say, I got a notice on the phone, mm-hmm. they were evacuating. So that's hit, hitting close to home because Index is only about 40 miles, yeah. 45 miles from Seattle. You know, you can get there in, in an hour and a half, you know. So mm-hmm. that's pretty close to home now. But, right, um, right. Well, let's get into it. What's going on? Okay. Well, I'm going to go back in time a few weeks. The last time we recorded was just before the wool auction. Mm-hmm. So I have to talk about the auction. It was really fun. Um, I had a great time. And as Marcia says, full disclosure, I actually had to go back <laughs> and remind myself what I bought because so much has happened since then. Yes. <laughs> so I, um, I ended up with a 10 pound Corydale fleece. That was the mm-hmm. one that was one of the ones that I had on my list as I'm interested in it. And it was mm-hmm. actually the reserve breed the reserve breed champion. Um the mm-hmm. breed champion fleece was a was a Cormo, a really nice Cormo, and the reserve was a Corydale by a woman named Marsha Baranaga. And this was her first time mm-hmm. showing at the the Monterey County wool auction and she did quite well. She had a lot of um, a lot of the winners were hers. Um, this reserve mm-hmm. was hers. There was a the market champion white U was hers. The reserve market champion was hers, and I think that was it. I think the others were someone else. But in any case, she did quite well. Her fleeces were really mm-hmm. nice. Um, so I got mm-hmm. this ten pound Corydale, and oh my gosh, it's gorgeous! It's gorgeous, so beautiful. Huge, <laughs> <It's> enormous. <laughs> yeah, fleece. ten pounds. You're uh, 
Yeah. Well, yes, you'll lose a lot in when you wash it. Mm-hmm. Yes. But still, you have a massive fleece. That's <laughs> yes, it is a massive fleece, and and I will lose a lot because it's extremely greasy. So mm-hmm. um, there will be a lot of grease that that gets washed out. A lot of lanolin will get washed out of that one. Um, but I did skirt it just a little bit more than it had been, and I I was I'm. I was in my new plan where before I put it away, I look at it, shake off all the second cuts, because there's always some, you know, that's an undesirable mm-hmm. thing to have, but you always have some. Shake mm-hmm. off all the second cuts, look at it really carefully, take off um, bits that are shorter than, you know, like looking at the fleece, like, oh, it's all so long. And then there's a little bit that's that's a, that's a little shorter, take that off. So I really looked at this fleece pretty carefully and it is, there's a lot of, a lot of lanolin on it that'll go. Um, but it's mm-hmm. beautiful and it's nice and soft. I think, um, I don't know if I washed a lock of it or not, but they had it on the board at Monterey County Fair auction. They have a board where they take a lock of each fleece and they wash it and they put mm-hmm. it up on, on this board for display. So you can see what the fleece is like when it's washed and, Really, Mm -hmm. really nice. So that was the fleece I meant to buy. Mm Because remember my rule that I could buy one. Yes. And Mm -hmm. then I could buy a second one in an emergency. (laughs) Yes. And did you have, you had an emergency. I had an emergency and a half. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, so the half, the half emergency, it wasn't actually an emergency. A woman, Kyoko, who is in the guild, she came up to me and said, I am interested in this fleece, and I think you might like it. Would you be interested in splitting it with me? And so I went to go look at it, and and it's a really nice light silver. It was in the low quarter. No, it was in the quarter blood category. Yeah. Um, it was in the quarter blood category of the um, okay. natural color fleeces. And so the blood system, classification system, it starts off with fine, is the finest of the wools. And then the next category is half blood, which would be, it used to be like half of the f- genetics of the sheep is merino but what it means now i mean this is a real historical old system the bradford no not even the bradford system anyway um this is an old system of of measuring um it's the fleeces that would be the 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 fineness or the micron count of something that was half merino so it doesn't have to be a half merino sheep but uh, in that fineness category. And then mm-hmm. the next category is three-eighths blood. And then the category after that is quarter blood. And most of the time, the quarter bloods are like Romney, something, you know, little coarse, um, long wools usually. And mm-hmm. this one is also a long wool, but it's really, it's pretty soft too. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about, about this fleece. And it's a light, like a white, kind of white gray. Mm-hmm. Um, so not that creamy color, you know, of what you think mm-hmm. of as a white fleece, but it's, it's got some darker gray, a little bit darker gray in it, some silvery bits. Okay. Um, but it's more like a, kind of like my mom's hair, you know, that mm-hmm. white, silver white <laughs> color. So it's really pretty. So she and I split it and it's a seven pound fleece. So I have three and a half pounds of that. Um, okay. So that'll be really nice. It's not a small amount, you know, unlike my Corydale. But then came the real emergency, right? Mm-hmm. The real emergency <laughs> was a Rambouillet fleece. Mm-hmm. There were three Rambouillet fleeces in the breed class. And he said in, in my notes, it, it, I've written down that he said that they were all consistently good. Um, mm-hmm. The first place one, you know, was just the, the, the nicest, but the second and third were also very close to the first. And so I ended up buying the second place Rambouillet fleece because it wasn't selling. Mm-hmm. This one was nice. It, I thought it was nice when I looked at it and it wasn't selling. So I bid on it. Um, so mm-hmm. I got, so I got that 
and it's a seven and a half pound rambouillet fleece. And that one, I okay. actually separated out the best bits of it. Um, the, the fine, you know, the part, the part of the fleece that's the finest and softest. Mm -hmm. And so I separated that out. So I have it in its bag, but there's a separate pillowcase inside of the bag with the nicest mm -hmm. part of that, of that fleece. So I got three really nice fleeces and I didn't mm -hmm. break the bank, which was good. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, then I came home and I dragged out everything from the garage, opened up the fleeces that I hadn't looked at. I think I opened up everything. I think I opened up everything and skirted a lot of them a little bit more, shook them mm -hmm. a little bit more to get any dirt and second cuts and stuff off. Um, washed some of it. I washed. Do you remember at Black Sheep Gathering, there was a 10 pound fleece. The name of it was Jazz Man. You won't remember that. But um, <laughs> Judith McKenzie was judging and mm -hmm. it was in the, I forget the class system that they use at Black Sheep Gathering, but it was in a category more for long wools, for coarser fleeces. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't place it. She said, this is a gorgeous fleece. This fleece is oh, beautiful, it but it's in the wrong class. I can't. I, I do remember this, yes. yes. She said, I can't give it a ribbon in this class. And mm -hmm. so I made note of that. And when we went back to look at the fleeces at one point, probably we had already bought what we were going to buy, and we went back, and it was still there. Mm -hmm. You know, because it hadn't placed in its class, and because it was a 10-point something, over 10-pound mm -hmm. fleece, it hadn't sold. And so I bought it. And it's the most expensive fleece I've ever bought. I think it was like 22 or $23 a pound. But mm. it's like, here's this fleece that Judith said was fabulous and no one bought it. Mm. I have to buy it. <laughs> so I took that one out and I sorted it. It was a multicolor variegated mm -hmm. fleece. And I sorted it from dark to light and... um you know, skirted it again a little bit more. And then there was about three pounds of it that was um, in that m sort of a light gray color, mm -hmm. kind of a cream and gray uh, variegated that's going to, you know, blend up to be a light gray. And so I took, I took some of that out because there was more of that color than anything else. So I took some of that out and I washed it. And oh my God, is that a nice fleece? It's a Columbia mm -hmm. Merino and something else. Okay, so I know it's not critically important for you to know this, but it's Columbia Merino and CVM. And while I'm popping in here during editing, I thought I would mention something I forgot to say. Um, and that is that one of the fleeces, a border lester, that's a long wool, not a next to skin breed, probably rug or upholstery. Anyway, a border lester fleece went for $69 a pound. <laughs> I could not believe it. There was this huge bidding war between two women from up in the San Jose uh, Guild. I think they're in the San Jose Area Guild. Anyway, yes, $69 a pound for a Border Lester fleece. And I think $23 or $22 a pound is expensive. <laughs> and then the other thing I wanted to mention is the fleece that I raved about in the last episode that I really liked um, that was a reserve champion, light gray, um, soft, you know, nice fine wool. Uh, I think it made it might have been half blood category. Anyway, it was an it was a really soft fleece. Um, it went for thirty three fifty a pound, and that's too rich for my blood too. Um, so anyway, just wanted to pop in and tell you that I cannot believe that someone would pay $69 a pound for a long wool. And you know I like the long wools. Columbia gives it a little bit more um, length and, and a little more silky 
mm-hmm. feel to it. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I'm like, okay, why have I been spinning? I mean, the stuff I'm spinning is I have nice fleeces. I'm not saying, but why have I been spinning my bargain basement fleeces? And for <laughs> like four years, this one has been in my garage. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, was, Kelly. Why did you come up? Did you come up with an answer? Uh, why? Well, yeah, partly, partly it was because I knew I wanted to do something where I separated out all the colors and mm. spun the color separately. Um, and so that you know that was work that I had to do first. I couldn't just reach in the bag, grab some, and wash it. Um, mm-hmm. So, so now I have some that's washed. And then the rest of it is all sorted by color. Mm. And I think mm-hmm. I want to do a sweater color work. I, kind of, I, I'm going to say Marie Wallen style because that's the only mm-hmm. designer I know that does the real intricate. But I know there's other designers that mm-hmm. that have those real intricate um, patterns, you know, intricate pattern, color work patterns. I don't and know. Kind if, of fine. Not like the Cowichan. Right, right. Finer than that, yeah. Yes. And I don't know if I want something that's just a color work yoke or if I really do want something that's all over color work. Mm-hmm. I think I might like a cardigan. I've seen a couple of them, like an all over uh, color work cardigan in the natural colors with, you know, those Norwegian closures. Norwegian mm-hmm. style or Scandinavian style right, yeah. closures. Um, so I think I might, and hemmed, you know, hemmed at the bottom instead of a ribbing. I, I have mm-hmm. a picture in my mind of a sweater I've seen, or maybe several sweaters mixed together. But So I'm thinking maybe that will be what I do with that fleece eventually. But I have about, I have almost three pounds to play with, just, mm-hmm. you know, of the same, basically the same light gray to do something else. Oh, with. okay. So, um, because again, ten pound fleece. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. going to be a lot of leftovers. Um, yeah. If all I was making was a color work sweater. So, so anyway, that was a very fun weekend. I did that over the Labor Day weekend. Um, it was really hot, and I played in water and washed fleeces and sorted fleeces and labeled fleeces and put them all back in the garage and then took out. Um, uh, took out some stuff that is, you know, that is, I could easily just finish and get done. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, the the fleece auction, the wool auction, I kind of went into projects a little bit with all that washing stuff, but the fleece auction was a blast. I had a great time, mm-hmm. and I have now two and a half more fleeces. So I two fleeces went out of my uh, my stash this year. The Oxford and the Columbia. Um, and then, oh, and the Shetland. Three fleeces went mm-hmm. out of my stash this year. Oh, so I, it's a, you have a net gain loss, right? Because I have a net loss. Three mm-hmm. came in. Yes, that's <laughs> three right. Three came in. Except, the, yeah, well, yes, that one of them is a half a fleece. So I'm, I actually have a, I actually have a net, a net loss of a half a fleece. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kelly, you just keep telling yourself that. <laughs> I can, yes, I can tell myself that. As for as for actual poundage, I'm sure I'm uh, in a net gain situation with mm-hmm. a ten pound fleece, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was well, very fun, very fun adventure. Yeah. I have others, but but what? what um, tell us about some of your stuff that you've been doing. What have I been doing? Well, so Labor Day weekend, uh, I just a shout out to Kelly, um, our friend Kelly Brooke from, uh, she's a listener and she, um, we met her. She, remember she introduced it. Well, I'm saying, remember, you know, this, she introduced herself to us at Stitches Mm -hmm. and we had a nice dinner with her and her friend Lidoom. And then, um, she came to the knockers retreat. Anyway, she was really nice. She invited us, Kim and myself over to her house for lunch. Uh, I think that's Saturday of Labor Day weekend. And she lives on Vashon Island. So that was fun to take the ferry over there. And, um, yeah, that and then we fun. did a day trip. Yeah, it was really nice, beautiful garden. And she sent me home with a, um, 
a bag of Gravenstein apples. So I made six pies that I <laughs> that are in the freezer. I did what my mother would do is that she would make the pies and she'd freeze them unbaked. Mm-hmm. And then um, when on a Sunday night, if we wanted a pie, she'd just pull one out and bake it. And she would just throw it in the oven frozen. And um, so, which is what I did. It bake, takes a little bit longer to bake, but it, t- it turned out great. So I have, uh, so thank you, Kelly, for my pies. Yeah, um, cool. That was fun. And we did, and the next day I was kind of wondering about this, but we went down just a day trip down to um, Seabrook on the Washington coast where we go all the time. And I'm just going to interject. Um, met our friend, Jean, who used to own the yarn shop down there. And we took the dogs to the beach, um, did a nice long five or six mile walk with the dogs and then came back up from the beach. And there was a Saturday market going on and there was all sorts of craft things that they were doing. Like, you know, um, Oh, you know, they had, people were selling, uh, beads and jewelry you know um mm-hmm. you know anyway and then um uh, there was a guy who was uh made terrariums out of um he out of old liquor bottles um you'd have terrariums in those and everything anyway but there was a woman who was uh dying and um uh i'm just gonna her name is kathleen adams olson and she's not opened it yet but uh Jean said she's uh, she and her husband are remodeling uh, part of the house to put in a dye studio so that she's hoping to teach classes down there, which I'm going to keep an eye on this because I'm really yeah. interested in doing it. That sounds really anyway, fun. Her, I'm really excited about her possible – or the dye studio that she's going to have. But at the, Satur- the Saturday market, she had a booth where you could dye a silk or a silk scarf or a cotton bandana and with natural plants – so, Kelly, you and I, we've done the natural dyes where you actually just take the plants and you stew them and make a, mm-hmm. a mixture that you then dye your yarn. This, she had either the cotton or the silk fabric had been, um, she'd already had them, um, um, impregnated them with a mordant. And then what you do is you would lay out a piece of cloth and then lay out a piece of plastic on that cloth and then lay out your material that you're going to dye. And she had five gallon buckets full of all these different plants. So ferns and um, eucalyptus, two types of eucalyptus, um, hops. Um, I'm trying to think of the other things and flowers. So she had some cosmos bachelor buttons um, what is it? Red Beckia, um, mm-hmm. black eyed Susans. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what else she had, all kinds of things anyway. So then when you go pick out what you wanted and you just lay it on as much or as little as you want, you just lay it on your material. And then what you did is you took a, a wooden dowel about an inch in diameter and you roll it up the, your material the fabric that you're dyeing, the plastic and this cloth, you and the purpose of the plastic is to prevent the the dye from getting on the back side of the fabric. So oh, you get yeah. a little bit clean, you know, so it's not double dyeing it, mm-hmm. I guess what I say. So anyway, then you roll like it up it as tight as you can. it doesn't soak through onto another. Soak through, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, then you roll it up as tight as you can on this dowel and then take string and wrap it around as, and keep it as secure. I mean, really, really tight and secure. And then just put it in the stock pot of simmering water for about an hour. So we went and got ice cream and then came back and unrolled it. And it's beautiful. So interesting. And Kelly, you know, what's so interesting about dyes is that the color of the, um, the plant is not necessarily the color of the finished color on the fabric. Mm-hmm. Right. So I have, I put on here um, and I, I'll, um, I have a video on my Instagram, but I'll see if I can put the video in the show notes or something, but it's, um, or a photograph of it. So the ferns were bright green and they're this beautiful sort of sepia tone, kind of that uh, brownish color. Mm-hmm. The eucalyptus was brown, but one is um, kind of a rust color and one turned out like a bright green. Um, what I thought oh, was the most interesting were the cosmos. So the cosmos that was um, 
a deep purple turned out sort of a um, kind of an indigo blue. And what really surprised me were the cosmos that were hot pink turned out green. <laughs> I think that's oh, an interesting wow. green. Mm-hmm. Really, really fun. Yeah, I think they're done with the Saturday market down there for the season, um, but it'll start again in probably Memorial Day weekend, and hopefully she'll be down there because I would like to do another one. It was so much fun. Or I'm going to kind of keep track of her and find out when her dye studio opens up. So That does sound um, fun. Yeah. So, And then I've been busy, too, uh, just uh, hikes. I've been doing a lot of hiking, and um, – I posted on Instagram, so I'm, I'm re- kind of repeating myself about this, but I, my friend Janine that I met actually hiking, we um, she texted me that she had planned a weekend, because uh, it was last weekend, the weekend of the fire, uh, to go hiking on the Olympic Peninsula. So um, we left, um, did a, got over there and um, had dinner, and then went up to, at Hurricane Ridge, they had a moonlight walk you so you hiked at night started at 7 30 at night and the idea was to go see the moon and the stars because we had the fires we didn't see a thing <laughs> like we didn't even yeah. see the moon it was so uh so much smoke so but it was kind of interesting to hike at night i had not done that before yeah um so that was kind of fun and then spent the night in a yurt which i've never done that before and that was actually really quite nice and it's basically you're camping, but it's kind of a bit of an upscale, upscale camping. In fact, it's it's billed as glamping. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it's glamping, but you're at least you're not. They you know there's a bed there. You're not um, right sleeping on the ground, and um, and then the next day that morning we got up and um, went out to Nia Bay, which is. The northwestern, no, the word is northwesternmost is the, how it's actually phrased, point of the, the continental U.S. So, and that's actually on the Macaw Indian Reservation. So, we did a hike to, and I don't know if it's called Shishi Beach or Shai Shai Beach. I heard both, but it's S-H-I, and then the second word is S-H-I. Um, and where you hike through the forest down to the beach and along the beach out to the arches, which is this rock formation. And then hike back, that's about eight miles. And then after that, we just did a short drive to Cape Flattery, which is which is actually considered the northwesternmost part of the continental U.S. So we walk out to that point and then went home. So it was really a nice, um, fun weekend and really different. I, hadn't, I don't really camp, as you know. So this was a nice... Uh, easy introduction back into camping. Nice. Yeah, but, that's uh, a yeah, so that was fun nice. way to do it where you don't have to really be in a tent or have all that equipment or any of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I did bring my sleeping bag and Jean did bring a camp stove so we could have coffee in the morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, But so there's like, you, you do need to bring your own food and whatnot. But right. there's showers and toilets and all that kind of stuff. But so. It's not quite the same land- as if you have to pitch a tent and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was really fun. Cool. Anything else about what you've been doing, or do you want to talk projects? Well, let me just mention about my camping trip, our camping trip that oh, we just yes. went on. So um, now that really is glamping. Yeah, you camp. <laughs> this this was this was definitely glamping. So we had mm-hmm. three nights, and the first night was at a winery. Um, in Lodi called Clinker Brick Winery. Mm-hmm. It was really good. We we went with my mom and her husband, Dennis, and it was their first experience at Harvest Host site. I bought mm-hmm. him um, the membership for his birthday, and they were a little skeptical about boondocking, you know, camping with no mm-hmm. hookups. Um, their their trailer is new. They, they've been RV camping for a while now. They've had... They've had they had a pop up trailer, and then they had um, a, a couple of different RVs, and now they're back to a back to a trailer. They've downsized, but so they have a lot of camping experience. But it's all been mostly RV park type camping, mm-hmm. and then we meet them often at Mount Madonna. Um, so that's another place that that they like. But again, they have hookups, right? So. Um, Mm -hmm. they were a little skeptical about that, but they enjoyed, they met us at a winery in the Lodi area when we were coming back from, 
from our summer trip and seemed mm-hmm. like they were kind of interested. And so I got them the membership for Dennis's birthday. And then I just organized the trip, um, made all the reservations and stuff for this first, you know, for this first trip. The first winery, really nice. Definitely would go back there. I had good recommendations. Tracy Littletown Knitter had told me it was a nice place. Um, and, and I'm going to have to, we're going to have to go back there, Tracy. And, and when you're, uh, more mobile and you can actually meet us and mm-hmm. kind of have a glass of wine and, and, and maybe have dinner with us or something. But it was just really nice that we parked right next to the grapes. Um, they had mm-hmm. a, a vineyard and then they had just a couple of rows of grapes around a green grass area. And so Robert and I, we were parked next to the vineyard and my mom and Dennis were uh, in front of us in front of that. Um, grassy area so it was perfect you know we used the grass area as our private you know little private patio area um, during the next morning and during the evening after the winery closed Mm -hmm. but you know during while the winery was open we went over there we had some tasting flights brought the dogs they have a corgi and then we have r2 and everybody gets along great and they just hung out under the table while while we drank wine and ate cheese and crackers and salami and mm-hmm. prosciutto and all that kind of stuff that you do at a winery. So that was our first night. And then the next winery we went to was called um, Good Mills Family Winery, also in Lodi. The camping mm-hmm. situation was not as good because they had a field that's across the street from the winery, just this big open mm-hmm. field um, for, for RVs to park in. And of course, at this time of year, it's dry and dusty and, you know, and of course, Robert and Dennis both like polish up the cars and the trailers before we go, which I think is <laughs> dumb <laughs> because you're well, just getting my- dirty. Maybe they believe what my father always believed, that he got better gas mileage if he started a trip with a clean car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always have to see. I don't know. We always have to start with a clean truck. And, of course, mm-hmm. he keeps the trailer really clean. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, that he didn't have to clean the trailer before we left because it was cleaned and then covered. But, you know, mm-hmm. as we drove in, as we drove in, he was like, oh, no, this is terrible. <laughs> I thought it was nice. It was great for the dogs. Um B- Barry's not reliable enough to let him off leash, but Maggie and Bailey both got to run around in the field. Of course, you know, Robert and Dennis are both cringing because they're blowing up clouds of dust as they run. And yes. Mm-hmm. So, but but the dogs had a good time. We had a good time. Um, the winery was nice. We sat under some redwoods in a little shady area. It was a warm day. Um, we sat in a you know nice shady area, very knowledgeable, very uh, generous pours on the tasting there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really nice, and we ended up you know again buying some bottles of wine and bringing them back to the trailer. And my mom had made a couple types of salad, and Robert had brought um, brought some sausage, and so we had a nice we had a nice dinner. And then the third night. We actually went to an RV park that my mom and Dennis belong to that's in the Delta, um, Mm -hmm. the the Sacramento River Delta. And that's a place where Dennis has spent a lot of time as a child growing up, teenager and stuff. His parents had a houseboat on the Delta. So he's real familiar with that area and has a lot of good memories for him. And so we stayed in in their place. You know, we, we were guests at their place um, in the Delta for the last night where we had full hookups. So, so that was, mm-hmm. that was really good. We had a little bit of a problem with our electrical, but I think Robert's gotten it figured out. He's off to a nearby campground with our surge protector this morning so he can plug into the 30 amp power and see what happens. He didn't bring mm-hmm. the trailer. He just brought the, the power cord mm-hmm. and his electrical mm-hmm. testing equipment. So, but mm-hmm. you know, we have solar too. So. You know, we didn't have any issues because of the uh, the cha- the power challenges that we were having at mm-hmm. at that um, at that park, and then we headed home, and they headed up the road because they're going to go visit my sister. So, so yeah, it was a very oh, okay. fun trip. L- lucky for me, I have I have um, the availability to be on the road and work remotely on Fridays and Mondays, so I was able to do that. Mm-hmm. 
I'm paying nice. the price today, but you know, <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. No, it's nice to have that that ability to mm-hmm. do that. You know. Yeah. Um, so I'm already planning our next harvest host trip. I don't know when it will be, but I've got couple of fairly close places in mind and maybe Mm -hmm. do the same thing where we spend two nights in wineries and one night um, at an RV park where we can dump the tanks and yeah have a shower I would I was gonna say something about the um the the you're saying that about the the wine tasting and they were generous pours and stuff the thing that's kind of nice about this is you don't have to drive. You just That's have right. your tasting and then you just go back to your trailer. So there's no issues with getting in the car or having to have some person who's the, you know, Robert would be the designated driver. Mm-hmm. And it's nice you don't have any of that. So everybody can enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very short commute tasting. back to your, back yeah, to your yeah. bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which you probably need after the the large uh, flight. <laughs> the generous um, pours on the flight. Yes. <laughs> yes. Huh. <laughs> Well, that sounds fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, and I, yeah. I'm really happy, um, thinking of Kelly, that you gave the shout out to. She's the one who who sort of tipped me over the edge. I've been thinking about Harvest Host, and, and mm-hmm. she was telling us about it. And so that was what you know finally prompted me to actually pull the trigger and join. And I'm really glad we did. It's been really, it's been really nice. We've enjoyed yeah. our membership a lot so far, and we've only stayed in a well, few places. Well, I, I, since we're talking about Kelly again, I, you know, and she tipped you over the edge on this. She tipped me over the edge on something, Kelly. Oh, yeah. when, we, when we were over at her house, and we were, and she's a fantastic weaver, and she was. Um, but anyway, she said that there's a uh, uh, there's a class. Um, anyway, an introduction to weaving, which I'm going to take, uh, is like January thirtieth. Starts, I think, the 30th of January, oh, just five days. So um, she told me about it, and I went and I signed up for it. So I'm going to – and Kim has signed up for it, so we're going to um, – she'll have to take some vacation time, but we're going to do that. So we'll be going over to Vashon Island every day for five days uh, Oh, that January. sounds fun. So I, yeah, so I, it was based on her recommendation. So she's she's turning us on to a lot of things, right? She, yes, she's, a, she's an enabler for sure. <laughs> she's an enabler, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, well. Anyway, so, uh, so do we, now? Do we want to talk about projects? Yeah, or I think that's all my feel... little adventures for for now. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Well, I, um, I'll just talk about mine then, uh, because I, I'm going to say. So, I, well, I'm going to. I did cast on a new project, and I'm going to bring this up because uh, I'll just start with this one first because it relates to my camping trip uh, at the yurt. Um, so I cast on a sock for my brother, and I'm using the uh, fingering weight yarn uh, from Weird Sisters Wool Emporium in Aberdeen, Washington. And you remember, Kelly, last September when you came mm-hmm. to visit, and we went to Seabrook, um, you were working, and so Mark and I went in to to visit them, and I brought you a skein of yarn, which I think you used. Uh, mm-hmm. I've yeah. forgotten. You made socks. I made of, socks. I... It was the happy little colors or something like that. Bob Ross. Oh, uh, um, it was happy. Um, happy little mistakes. It was happy all little of their, mistake, yeah. Yeah. There are ones that they were either test colors or something. I don't know. Or something that they, they were all in the happy little mistakes bin. But um, anyway, I bought, um, he picked out this colorway. It's called Mermaids of the Black Lake. And it's a, a Harry Potter colorway. Oh, okay. And so I cast on socks for him. But I did realize after I cast them on that the yardage is 328 yards, which I don't think is quite enough for a pair of men's socks. So I bought a contrasting color for the heels and toes. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's called Dream in Color Yarn. And the skein is called mini smoosh i guess the yarn is smooshy mm-hmm. but this is mini smooshy and it's i believe it's just 100 yards so it should be enough they sell it as fingering weight yarn for heels and toes oh that's little good mini skeins so yeah so i bought that i'm sitting here working on it now i've uh turned the heel and i'm working on the gusset now so the the main sock is like 
like mermaids, you know, it's Mm -hmm. dark green and aqua and a little bits of bright green in there. It looks like murky mermaid water, kind of, you know, and then the, the contrasting um, heels and toes are uh, kind of an aqua color. Um, So, and I had a Navy that I was thinking of using, but it seemed like it was a little bit too light a weight fingering for the, this yarn. It didn't match very well. And um, I think heels and toes, you want something maybe a bit heavier than you don't want anything too fine. Yeah. So, um, and it did not have nylon in it. And this has some nylon in it, which I think is better for heels and toes. And I just think it's happier, you know, mm-hmm. having something a little bit brighter. And he likes bright colors. But what I want to say is I about the camp, how it relates back to the camping trip. We were sitting in the morning at the yurt having coffee and I was working on this sock and I put the sock away with my needles in my little needle case, put it all away. And I have those signature needles mm-hmm. and I got home and I realized I was missing a needle. Oh, no. So I lost it at the campsite. So I ordered another one mm-hmm. and you know, they're expensive. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'm just going to order another one cause I need it. So I ordered it. And when it arrived in the box, I started laughing because you know how sharp those needles are? I've stabbed myself a couple of times mm-hmm. with those needles. But in the box on the bill of sale, at the bottom, there's a disc- um, a warning that you're not supposed to let children play with them. Makes sense. You're not supposed to stick them in your ear, which makes no sense why anybody would ever consider doing that. I don't know. But anyway, because they're so sharp. Mm-hmm. Why would anybody? I don't know. Anyway, that's a weird one. But this is the one that got me is that you're not supposed to knit with them while you're riding as a passenger in a car, because if you're in an accident, the airbag, you'll get stabbed with them as the airbag, you know, deploys. I always sit and knit with these things as when I'm a passenger in a car, if I'm working on a sock. You could puncture yourself or the airbag, I guess. Or the airbag. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's exactly what it says. So interesting note. I did not. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, those are really sharp. They're really sharp, yeah. So anyway, I'm continuing to work on happiness. And I have finished the front and back, and I've sewn the shoulders together. And I now need to pick up for the collar. So the next step is to knit the collar. I think it's about a one-inch neckband. And then I'll go back and pick up for the sleeves. So I'm I'm getting pretty close to being done because... I said, I think in the last time we recorded, the sleeves are only six inches. Yeah. Because it is that sort of drop, very, very exaggerated drop shoulder Mm -hmm. sweater. So um, the sleeves fit like three quarter length sleeves, but they're only six inches of uh, ribbing that I do. So I'm getting pretty close. Yeah, cool. And um, yeah, excited about that. And then my other project I've been working on, continue to work on is the spinning um, that Manx Lochten. And as you know, I had a two pound bag of roving. Um, just last night, I finished my 11th skein. <laughs> so I now have about 1100 yards. Um, and I've spun 22 ounces. So I have another 10 ounces to spin. Now you made good progress this summer. Mm hmm. I didn't finish in time for the the spin in, but I like I'm now so close. I have to finish this. Yeah, and well, I really it'll be a I good thing to spin on over the winter. Yeah, just yeah. Put it in your basket. Put the the fiber in your basket, and you could just kind of plug away at it. Well, and you know how I I got I got a lot of spinning done because I um on Monday I watched the um the Queen's um mm, funeral, mm-hmm. so that's eight hours of spin. I mean, right. pretty much eight. I, now I would say I didn't do it a solid eight hours, but that was a very long uh, funeral. So I uh, got a lot of spinning done in, mm-hmm. during that. So anyway, that's it for me for projects. How about you? Yeah, I have, besides the carding that I finished up on that uh, Wensleydale Cormo that I was working on, <clears throat> I got that all done and boxed up as I was doing all of the, you know, f- sort of fleece inventory um, mm-hmm. so that's all carded. I have just over 25 ounces of bats. So I'm excited about that. And then I took my, uh, drum carter, 
um, and took the drive band off of it, cleaned it all up, oiled it, put it away, covered it. So I won't probably be doing a carding project for for at least a little while. Um, but mm-hmm. it had been, I mean, I've had that thing for over 20 years. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've dusted it off a little, but I haven't, re- and I've taken like the waste yarn off of it, you know, cleaned mm-hmm. the teeth. Um, but I haven't, I don't think I've ever, you know, washed, washed and oiled it with like that wood, you know, wood soap and mm-hmm. Murphy's mm-hmm. oil soap and a wood polish. So use a little Howard's feed and wax on it and got it put away and looks really nice. I was, I was kind of ashamed when I saw the one that, um, the Duncans had, you know, <laughs> at their booth mm-hmm. at Black Sheep Gathering. And I was getting information about how to adjust mine. Mm-hmm. And his was so clean and pretty and nice. <laughs> and <laughs> mine is so grungy. And so I got it all cleaned mm-hmm. up. Um, you know, some of the places are hard to dust because you can't really, I mean, you have to kind of turn it and poke a little cloth in there in little spots mm-hmm. where, you know, debris from the from the fiber, pieces of fiber and, and chaff and stuff have, have sort of embedded themselves. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. got that all cleaned up and put away. So carding for a while for me is done, I think. Um, but I was pleased to have all that Wensleydale Cormo all of that done and in a box. My original Mm -hmm. thought was that I had three pounds, but then we spun or we, we carded with it and people spun with it at uh, knockers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I've given some away elsewhere. I know I've done a little sampling with it. So, and somewhere on a packet, on a, a label, I had, 26 ounces and I thought well that's weird because I thought I had three pounds of this and I know I had more than 26 ounces because I ended up with 25 ounces of bats and I know I had more than one ounce of waste because toward the end I was kind of like no throwing that away nope too dirty Mm -hmm. throwing that away I was pretty ruthless with Mm -hmm. um, with the le- you know the last bits of it, I had already carded all the stuff that was easy, you know, locks that were easy to pull off and and card. And when I got to the stuff that was more difficult, or you know, just not as um, not as easy to see the lock structure, it was like okay, mm-hmm. yeah, no, this is waste. So I I got that done, um, and then I started. I've also put away my spinning wheel. I have to clean it up a little. Um, but I, I haven't done that, uh, but I'm going to see about getting that part fixed. So I started spinning on the Wyatt Norwegian wheel, and I had mm-hmm. a Lincoln, a, a bag of Lincoln roving that Janai gave me. She won it when she won a spinning wheel. I think that was Janai. Mm-hmm. And she she, she um, said, oh, do you ever spin, spin long walls? And I said, yeah. And so she brought it for me. Um at one point. So I've had it in the garage for a while. And so I'm spinning that. I've got two skeins of the Lincoln Roving done, two pretty good sized skeins of Lincoln Roving. And I've still got singles on the bobbin. So I'll continue with that project, um, spinning in with that wheel. I have to say, getting used to the double drive after having done so much spinning this summer with the Irish or Scotch tension wheel, the little Herbie. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a little, um, a little f- more fiddly. So mm-hmm. I have to, a little more finicky. And oh, why do you think that is? Why is it more fiddly? Well, I think it's just a, it, the adjustments are uh, adjustments are um, not as easy to get right. So I'll adjust mm-hmm. it a little, and then that's not right, and then I'll have to adjust it a little more. Mm-hmm. You adjust it. So on the Scotch tension wheel, you adjust it by tightening that brake band that mm-hmm. goes over the bobbin. Right. On the double drive wheel, you tighten it by moving the flyer out from the wheel or closer to the wheel. Oh, okay. So it's a different kind of adjustment, and I'm just not, I'm just not in tune mm-hmm. with it. And then the You're other out of practice, yeah, of I'm out of practice. And the other thing is the the drive band is a little bit too big. That wheel's been sitting, and I haven't used it much. And so I think the drive band just got sort of soggy. The string, mm-hmm. you know, it just kind of stretched out a little. So I'm the the other part of it is that I'm right at the. I have to move the flyer out further, right? 
to to adjust the tension to tighten that that drive band move the flyer out further away from the wheel but i'm reaching the edge of how far it will adjust Mm -hmm. so i think the whole thing will be better if i just put a new drive band a short new shorter drive band on it Mm -hmm. or shorten the drive band that i have so i have more you have more ability to adjust it because right now, mm-hmm. as I'm adjusting, I'm like right on the edge, and I can't adjust any more than that. Mm-hmm. So, it's just part of it's just getting used to the new system again, and and part of it is that I think I need a shorter drive band, <laughs> so I won't be mm-hmm. at the edge of the adjustment area. Yeah. So yeah. But that's been kind of fun spinning that. Uh, it's been a while since I've spun Lincoln, and it's super shiny and heavy. The skeins are just just gigantic you know the 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 weight of them they're so dense that fe- you know that feeling mm-hmm. like mohair has too yeah that density yeah. so that's been really nice um so I'll, I'll finish that up you know just spinning in the evenings i'll finish that up and i don't have another spinning project in mind for when that's finished but it'll be a while before i get that done um but i do mm-hmm. have a new knitting project. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, that vest has been on hiatus for a while, the mohair Uh, vest, and mm -hmm. I needed something. I I needed a project, so I quickly got this project going for our camping trip. It's called the Central Park West Shawl, and it's by Mm -hmm. Chic and Regal Knits. The reason I have this pattern, it was one of those, you know, put in your criteria on Ravelry and up pops a perfect pattern. I had Mm -hmm. the three, three skeins of a yarn called from the fiber company called Acadia and it's Mm -hmm. uh, wool and alpaca and silk. And I bought it at Tolt when you and Janice and I, when Mark took us all out Mm -hmm. to Tolt in 2019. So it's been sitting in my stash a while as Perfect fall colors. It's a sort of an eggplant. It's called cranberry. I guess it's more cranberry than eggplant. It's kind of a burgundy color. Mm-hmm. So there's a burgundy and there's a green. Um, it's called jack pine. So it's a really, it's a brighter, lighter green than what I would think of as pine. Mm-hmm. A little more acidy. And then a pumpkin orange, which I don't have the colorway name in Ravelry. I would think this would be called pumpkin, but I didn't see pumpkin as one of my choices for this particular mm-hmm. yarn. But it's, you know, it's kind of a rusty pumpkin orange. So anyway, mm-hmm. muted fall colors. And I, mm-hmm. I have, they're short skeins. They're only 50 grams each. Because, you know, the alpaca and the silk, they're more of a luxury skein. So mm-hmm. um, basically 150 grams. So it's not going to make a big shawl. So I put the yardage mm-hmm. in. I put the three color criteria in, I put in the shawl, you know, that I wanted to make a shawl and did the search and it popped this pattern and it's, it's got slip stitches and stripes and plain garter and lace kind of alternating throughout. It's a, just a triangle start at one point, sort of asymmetrical Mm -hmm. triangle, start at one point and just get wider and wider and wider until you're done Mm -hmm. and Hmm. so i can go as long as my yarn holds out you know if if i can't make it to the end of the pattern that's okay if i have extra yarn i can just add another repeat of something and Mm -hmm. and knit till my yarn runs out so so i've been having a good time with this it's you know it's a little it's a little of everything and Mm -hmm. uh, i had not ever it's nice i'm looking at the i'm looking at the pattern right Mm -hmm. now it's nice Yeah, I had not ever seen, it hadn't crossed my radar before, um, but I thought, okay, this is perfect. A three color, three color shawl, and I'm using Knit Companion. I I, I Mm. got the Knit Companion app. Oh, okay. So right now I'm using it on my phone, not my computer, my iPad, or not on my iPad. But yeah, so I'm just following along with the pattern on my phone. Real convenient. Nice. It doesn't have a... um, I don't have, you know, it's it's not something where you would need a chart. So I'm not using the chart. It's just basically just mm-hmm. a PDF of the pattern and a little hi- highlighter and, and, tape. 
And you have this on your phone. Yeah, it's an app. So okay. I have it on my phone and my iPad. Well, I, I know it's an app, but I, I know um, other people have had it like on their iPad, but I don't, I mean, I, my iPad's so old, it's not even really working anymore. I was, I was wondering if it will work on the phone, if it's easy enough on the phone, but it sounds yeah, like it is. It's small. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to, mm-hmm. you know, you have to enlarge things to be able to see it. Um, I mm-hmm. was going to use it on my, on my iPad, uh, but it wasn't charged this morning. So mm-hmm. I'm just, I just have it on my phone as we're talking. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. So then the, I'm still continuing to work on those um, shorty socks that are uh, the leftover yarn. I'm calling them my adult mm-hmm. layette socks because <laughs> they're the same <laughs> yarn as my uh, the Rachel sweater that I made, the striped mm-hmm. pullover. And it's Invictus Yarns Yak Lux in a, a blue green color that was the Knockers retreat color. For 2020, mm-hmm. and then a color called Nevermore, which is a kind of a blackish green, and then there's the vivid wool merino that fingering that you bought me in Iceland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a pair of shorty socks out of that. I worked on those a little bit too. Um, that was my that was my more mindless knitting when when I needed to not be looking at my phone and changing colors and mm-hmm. doing slip stitches and lace and counting and stuff. I thought, okay, I'll have two projects for the trip. So I worked on both of those over the trip. Nice. Yeah. So it's, it's a good mix of projects. It's not a lot of things, but it's a, it's a good mix yeah. at the moment. Well, I, I think the last episode I talked, I was going to start, go back to Ben's sweater and unravel that, but I, I'm going to, I'm making myself wait um, to finish the happiness mm-hmm. before I go on to anything else. So I think that's anyway, good. yeah, and I I had started these socks only because I wanted to take something on this camping trip, right? Uh, and I didn't want to take that; sh- it was too much to pack the sweater, so that's mm. why I did the socks. Okay, so that's it for projects. Yeah, that's it. Okay, prizes. Yes, oh, just quickly because <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put in here quickly, just under adventures. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still planning on going to the Fiber Fest in the Valley in Ellensburg, Washington on October 1st. I'm still planning on doing that. Okay, so yeah. just a shout out about it. adventures. Oh, um, I should add to the list, Lambtown, mm-hmm. Dixon, California. I mm-hmm. don't think I'm going to be going to Lambtown. I, I had been kind of up in the air. I hadn't made firm plans about it because we did have this trip planned with my mm-hmm. mom and Dennis and then I wasn't sure what we were going to have going on uh, in October uh, there was a potential for another family get together thing uh, but anyway mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to Lambtown because it's far enough away that I have to you know have to I really have to leave like on a Friday and stay overnight mm-hmm. stay overnight the weekend yeah. Yeah. and I just I can't be away again so soon yeah. so I won't be going yeah. but it's a great time, and it's back in person. This is the the first time, first year back in person uh, since the pandemic. So, mm-hmm. so I'm sorry that I'm going to be missing it, but I just can't. I just can't swing it. Yeah. I'm having a little yeah. hard time um, getting accustomed to the 16 week calendar that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I I was in the quarter system when when I was a student. My my master's degree, we were we had quarter system, and then you know my while we were at Whitman, it was the semester system, and the quarter system just felt like it was so fast. Mm-hmm. Well, these sixteen week semesters also feel like they're really fast. We're we're in the fourth week of the semester already. Like I feel like we just started, well, and we're yes. almost a fourth of the way through. You know, by the time this podcast goes live. I will have a fourth of my semester over. And so mm-hmm. there's just not as much, there's not as much wiggle room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To get behind and get caught up. So everybody who's going to lamb town, have a good time, have a lamb sandwich for me. <laughs> or not uh, depending. Yeah. <laughs> Squish a few fleeces for me. <laughs> yeah. Or not. Yeah. Or not. If that's not your thing. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So now let's move on to the really fun stuff. Summer yeah. spin in. It's summer spin. Yeah, hoo hoo. It finished um, Labor Day, which was September fifth. Um, so it's all done, and so now we have prizes. So we're going to announce the winners of our prizes, and 
we pulled from the uh, finished object thread, mm -hmm. the discussion thread, mm -hmm. and the um, hashtag on Instagram. Yes, the yes the the hashtag that was on Instagram. So let's just start from the the beginning. I'll do the first one. Okay. Our first prize is a Shibui yarn hat kit that was donated by our friend Dagmar. And the winner of that is Michelle Mich uh, Michembri from North Carolina. Yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> she was very prolific in this. Yes. Spin -in. She yeah. did a lot of spinning. And what, I, what I'm really impressed with is that she did all that spinning at the same time that she was doing one of those crazy sock things, mm -hmm. sock competitions. It, I don't think it was mm -hmm. sock madness because I think that's back in March. But anyway, she was doing one of those sock competitions where, you know, you finish a sock in like two weeks or something and, mm -hmm. and was still able to be a really prolific spinner. So congratulations, Michelle. Yeah. Very nice. It's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, and then Kelly, the I, I'll just read the next mm -hmm. one too. So, um, an alpaca sample fiber set from Kathy Straight Fork, and the winner is uh, Fran. It's Fran, our friend from Florida. Yay! Yay! Yeah, Fla Fran um, had a good time. Um, she did something really interesting with one of her fleeces this year. She uh, made a quilt bat, mm -hmm. carded carded the fleece to put in quilts because she's doing a lot of quilting these days. And right. the next, okay, and the next prize is also from Kathy Straight Fork, mm -hmm. and it's the pint of maple syrup, and the winner is Pat Data Knitter. All right, yeah, Pat did some stash busting. Yes, <laughs> this yes. <time. laughs> <laughs> and then um, our next prize is a three ounce braid of hand painted wool flax blend in the colorway Key West by Purple Fleece. And Sarah Salpal donated that. And the winner is Mimi Fan. All right. Mimi from California. And our next prize. Is this is from me? This is the Fleber Farms Breed Study Sampler, and the winner is uh, I I don't know first name Kelly, but Longo Art Longo Art, mm -hmm. um, and that is we pulled that from our Instagram. Right, right, yeah. There was no first name listed on the Instagram profile, mm -hmm. just Longo Art L O N G O A R T. And the next prize is. Gotland Yarn and Roving from Sarah Souza, um, and she owns Wandering Fiber Farm. And the winner is also from Instagram, and it's Chewy underscore Docs. So C-H-E-W-Y underscore, then D-O-X, Chewy Docs from Instagram. Yeah, she posts really cute pictures of her, um, of her bulldog. She's also on oh. on Ravelry with with pictures of her bulldog. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? I wanted to correct something. I had put it in wrong in the show notes. Oh, um, the the Gotland Yarn and Roving, the company, um, is mm -hmm. Wandering Fleece Fiber Studio. Oh, okay. Let me. Uh, I want to make sure we this. get oh. that right. Wandering Fleece Fiber Studio, and okay. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. She has some really interesting things on her yeah, on yeah. her website. We talked about her her shop mm -hmm. in the in the last um, in the last okay. episode. Yeah, and I was really ha happy to see that um, Longo Art won from the Instagram uh, hashtag because she's a new spinner. So mm -hmm. this uh, breed study sampler will be a perfect a perfect yeah. prize. Uh, for someone, I think she posted, she said she had posted her first skein of plied yarn was posted mm -hmm. on, on Instagram. So, Oh, fun. Yeah, yeah. And we have a special prize for our yes. summer spin-in, an <laughs> unannounced special prize. Um, this is a prize for the best finis finished object of the spin-in, and it's going to super kip Natalie whose finished object during the spin-in was a baby girl. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> she spun a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so congratulations, Natalie, yeah. on the addition to your family. Yeah. So and, um, let me know, Natalie, if there's a pattern that you want to make for your little girl. Uh, just let me know. You can have a pattern of your choice uh, from mm-hmm. Ravelry. I just thought that was the most fun thing she posted in the in the chat mm-hmm. thread uh, that she had a finished project. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very cute. Yeah, very, yeah, that's great. I just want to say too, thank you for everybody who participated, and it's really fun, and it's really mm-hmm. fun to see to follow the chat, and it's really fun to see all the finished objects and all the things that people were doing, and yeah, it was really fun, and, and uh, I think it's my favorite. My favorite contest that we have, or that's not, it's not a contest, our favorite activity, mm-hmm. <laughs> joint activity. I really enjoy it. So, yeah, it is fun to see everybody's projects. It's, I was inspired this year. I really was inspired to get yeah. a lot of stuff done. I was too. And then I'm excited too, Kelly, because we haven't talked about this, but I'm pretty sure we're going to do our winter weave along. Mm-hmm. And the class that I'm going to take is during the winter weave along. So I can report in on that class that I take. So. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. I know you've wanted to participate in the past and, you know, well, we you did one year, um, but you wanted to participate in other years and just haven't been able I, I to partic- get Well, I'm going to say I participated one year because you flew up and <laughs> <laughs> made me participate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tied you to the loom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was super fun. But anyway, so I'm kind of excited about that. And I'll report in on that class, too. So oh, good. Um, and I will put in the show notes, too. Um, I have no idea um, how many people, what the enrollment is or anything like that. But I will put a link to the website in the show notes. I'm not saying the name of it because I cannot remember the name of the... Um, Oh, here it is. I just... I'm sorry. I can't announce it. It's um, called the Weaver's Palette. So just weaverspalette.com. Okay. And I'll put the link. It's uh, the class I'm taking is called Weaving Fundamentals. Um, And they now have the dates up here. And it's taught by mother-daughter team called, and their names are Janet Dawson and Sue Willingham. There's other classes too. There's a Talapalooza and two parts, Talapalooza first session, ta- Talapalooza second session, and then a continuing weaving, weaving class. So oh, it'll fun. be fun. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. So I'll put that link in the show notes. Okay. Our winter weave along is going to start October 1st. Okay. So it's coming. Okay. Well, we are, we're deciding right now. I mean, yeah. We're yeah. doing it. <laughs> I almost said the 15th, but, um, oh, we have to because mm-hmm. I need to get some weaving done. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you have some Gotland in your stash too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and if people don't remember what I'm joking about, is my infamous trip to Edinburgh to the Edinburgh Yarn f- uh, Festival, where I was got food poisoning, and in my fever, <laughs> and I bought a shockingly expensive amount of. Gotland yarn to make a sweater. And I realized I'm never going to make a sweater out of Gotland. So Kelly has it to, <laughs> it's in theory to weave a blanket for me, but yes. no pressure. Kelly, I'm seriously not pressuring you at all. I'm just laughing about <laughs> mm. mostly I still laugh and I'm shocked at what I paid for that yarn. It is because I was sick <laughs> but, and not thinking straight at all. And yeah, anyway, oh, you just had, but to- enough of that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the winter we yeah the winter we belong. We'll go ahead and start at October first. So we have okay. so we'll have that going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. I All think right. that's it. No more things we need to talk about. Nothing. So we'll just say goodbye then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get back to work. Yes. Back to work. All right. Same thing for me too. All righty. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2us doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.